And finally, we get our FPS gun animations. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Big Rook Games tutorial. In this series, we are going through and making Call of Duty Zombies with Unity 3D. And in today's tutorial, we will show you how to add a first-person controller animation with guns. Subscribe to us so you don't miss any future tutorials coming out. We have a bunch coming out in the next month. We'll be continuing this series as well as doing other scripts and giving out more free assets to everybody. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are going to be adding the shooting animations and reload. This is what it will look like when we are all finished today. Now let's jump back to the project where we left off and get started. And here's where we left off last time. We have our controller. We have our new boost movements, and we have the zombie spawns. So I found an awesome FPS kit that's royalty free, and I'm going to add that to the project, and it includes a lot of guns that we can use for everything, and it includes animations, as well as reload. So it's going to be perfect for our project. I included the link in the description. You can download that, or you can download it from the site. I'll link that also in the description. So first you want to import that into your project. So right click in the project asset uh, window and go to import package, custom package, find the unity package with the FPS kit player prefab and import that. Make sure everything is clicked. You can click the all button and click import. So now that we have our new FPS package imported, what we want to do is take the animations and put them onto our existing player controller since we already have a controller moving in managing the camera and the player, and we don't want to get rid of that. We just want to add the system that's used to show the animations and the firing. So what you want to do is go into your base assets folder, and it will have imported a player object with all of the objects that control the gun animations. So we're going to drag this over our existing controller, but we're going to disable a lot of the objects on the imported player controller. So drag your player game object onto your boost FPS controller from the previous tutorials and it will attach that to our existing controller and the new one that we downloaded has a minimap feature. I'm going to turn that off but that's what that little window is right there. If you expand the player object that you put onto the boost FPS controller you will see three sub objects and the minimap radar we want to disable that. We want to keep the sounds. You don't have to do anything there. Then there's a root go um, object. This has the main character uh, camera and the weapon camera. The main character camera, we already have a camera on our boost FPS controller. So you want to disable that. And our weapon camera root, this is where most of our uh, new functionality will be. And you can see the weapon manager has the script that controls a lot of what we're going to do today um, and it already includes a lot of guns here and you can see what it looks like if you enable the gun in the hierarchy you can see that it included it into our scene and this is what the script does when you switch guns it just enables that object it already has all the objects on it so leave that uh, disabled for now and for the new stuff to work we need to lock the cursor because that is how it determines when to enable all of the features. So in our boost controller, I'm going to open our boost movement script. So what you want to do in the start method is screen dot lock cursor. And sorry about my keyboard, I'm using a mechanical keyboard so I'm sure it's loud as hell. Equals true. And this will lock the cursor in the gameplay mode and it will also enable our new functionality. And if you try to press play, you will see that it will give you an error. It will say the namespace global already exists in the mouse look. And that's because we imported another mouse look and that has the same name as our previous one that we used in our boost controller. So I am just going to change the name of our second mouse look so that they do not clash with each other. Then the mouse look that we imported is in the weapon camera object under the root go. And if we double click on the script, we can open it up. And I am just going to change the name of this mouse look 
the mouse look new. And now if we press play, it should at least get into the game and there will be some errors because we need to reset the buttons. But you can see that we get into the game at least. So next, let's fix these other errors that we're getting. We can see that we have some errors. Let's say button inputs are not set up. So to edit your file, um, your project input, go to edit project settings input. And here it has all the predefined button inputs and we're gonna add some. So I'm gonna change the size from 15 to 20 and when you change the size or when you increase the size it will just duplicate your last one. So that's why we have five more jumps here. But I'm going to add the buttons that are in this script really quick. The first one is fire. It actually uses fire instead of fire one. So I'm just going to change that to fire. The next one we have is run. And I'm going to assign that to the left shift. The next one we have is crouch. I'm going to assign that to the left control. Next one we have is go prone. I'm going to assign that to the C key. Next one we have is use. That will be assigned to the E key. Next we need to position the weapon camera root so that it displays in front of our camera. So what you want to do is drag the weapon camera root to your main camera and nest it inside of that. And when you go into your weapon camera, disable the mouse look script because we don't want it looking in another direction than we already are looking with our main camera. To make sure that we see it, change the Y coordinate on the position to negative 0.5. And next we want to take our player component inside our boost FPS controller and change the tag to untagged because we want the player tag to only apply to our uh, overall player controller. And then we want to change the starting weapons and if you go into your weapon manager and open the weapons in use under the weapon manager script you can see you can set the starting weapons and we are going to start element 0 to pistol that will be the default weapon and element 1 to the axe next go to your boost fps controller and add a rigid body by going to add component rigid body and on this, we want to disable use gravity because we do not want to use that gravity. And in your weapon camera, you want to go in and disable the mouse look script as well as in the player object, disable the mouse look script and the rigid controller script. We do not need those. You could delete them if you want. I'm gonna leave them there for now. So now if we press play, we should have our gun in front of the screen and when we aim it should be down these sights and the cool thing with this kit is a lot of it is already developed so when you shoot there should be a bullet mark where you shoot on any object so even our zombies and we can put a cool particle effect there so we see that it's hitting the zombie so i see an exception i forgot to Find one of the keys in our project settings input switch fire mode so I'm just going to add that to the end and add one more onto our array and I'm gonna name it switch fire mode and this will switch in between fully automatic and semi-automatic if the gun allows it so I'm going to put that as the tab button or tab key so we shouldn't see that error anymore, and if we press play, we now have a first person controller with bullet holes, reload animation, and that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial we will be adding a score component and we will be adding damage to the enemies so that they can be killed. We will add a particle effect so it looks more realistic when they get shot. And that's it. That's all you have to do to add this to our existing project. Now we have a fully functional animation set with our weapons. 
And if you enjoyed the video guys, help us out and click the like button. Remember to subscribe so you can see the upcoming tutorials this month. We have a bunch coming out. Um, we will be continuing this series and we will be giving out assets for other things that we think are cool. And we'll be doing other tutorials and giving you the assets for free. All the assets that we used in this tutorial uh, will be provided on our website. I'll link in the description below. And if you have any suggestions or anything that you think would be cool in this series, let us know and we'll add it into it. And thanks for watching guys. See you next time.